Hello there, World of Tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Droodles Blitz. Holy crap, advertisements. As I was saying, I'm your host, Droodles Blitz, and in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the E75RT, otherwise known as the Keeler, and comparing it to the E75TS. Both of these tanks are very similar on their hull. In fact, if we take a look very closely, you'll notice that the Keeler is the exact same hull, even exhaust, as the E75TS. The the difference lies in the turret and as well the gun. So in today's video we are going to be talking about the differences between these two tanks and let me know in the comments down below which of the two you think is better. We're going to start off with the original, the E75 TS. This is a vehicle that likes being a big old box and honestly it's a pretty solid box at that. While the turret armor is not amazing on the tank, it does feature 10 degrees of gun depression. So the turret that's sitting at about 235 frontally when you're using it fully hauled down, can get up to about 250 thick. It's not super strong, I mean the majority of tier 8 heavies can penetrate it hull down, but it is still a pretty solid chunk of armor, especially when you're aiming at vehicles that don't have the most pen. When you add that into the fact that the gun has really good pen, 280 on the premium, 230 on the standard, and 2200 DPM with good dispersion, good aiming time, it's got a really all-round solid gun. When we take a look at the mobility, it's not the fastest at 38 kilometers per hour, 12 in reverse, especially with, oof, a power to weight of 10 but it does average 25. So it's a very uh, unique armor profile. It's got a lot of side scraping capabilities. The lower plate's pretty thick. You're not going to pen it with high explosive shells. The upper plate's pretty solid, but overall, it's just a well-armored vehicle. It's it's just got armor everywhere, which is really solid, especially if you've got tanks like a T-49 trying to pen you with heat. Good luck, because the spaced armor does actually work as spaced, and it's very, very tricky to get through if you're shooting very slow shell velocity tanks, let's say like an SU-152, you know, you're gonna have to worry about that, but as well, anything that shoots heat on premium, yeah, it's, it's a bit tricky to actually fight an E-75 TS when you have so much spaced armor. So, here we are, first battle, we have an AMX AC, Centurion Mark V-1, ISU-152, M4, yo, Skoda T-27, M41D, and Super Hellcats up against us. Now you can see here, this is the mobility. So, uphill, yeah, it's slow. It's a German Super Heavy, it makes sense. This thing weighs in at like 90 tons. It's a heavy vehicle. But, when you do go in a straight line, like this pathway over here, you can see we're already going 35. So this is where I actually do like that 38 km per hour top speed. Because as long as you stay on a somewhat straight path, Pathway, the E75 TS will actually go somewhat okay on speeds. It's not like an E100 where you're only going to go 30. I'm actually going 40 right now, so it's not the end of the world on mobility. Now, because this tank is uh, fairly flexible on gun depression, you can work it on really any ridge line. The TVP V2 is hopefully going to finish off this guy over here, but even if he doesn't, I'll finish him off. Got a nice shell to the Skoda once. I'm going to back on up, but he is able to penetrate another shell into us, but that's all fine. We're doing a uh, pretty dang well so far. The enemy doesn't really know what to do. Ah, that shell just robbed me if I'm going to be completely honest. Now, good example here of the armor. It's got solid armor, but when aiming at an ISU, you do got to be careful. Now, the ISU wasn't looking at me. It was looking at my teammate, so that's fine with me because obviously that means I'm not getting shot. Uh, let's see. We got the M4 Yo off to the side, so I'm going to aim it on him. There you go. Very easy pen into his vehicle. Got the Centurion Mark V1 off to the side as well, and the Yo. All right, well, we're going to go for another shell. It's the Yo. There you are. Another easy slap, and... Uh, weird, weird game so far, uh, if I'm gonna be completely honest. I don't really know what's going on, but I'm gonna get another shell into the yo, and, uh, ah, my camping T-28 Defender. I understand the, uh, Yag Panther camping, I do not understand the T-28, ah, and then it low rolls. Well, that's the end of me, ladies and gents. I mean, we did fine. As I said, the E75TS is a good vehicle. It's got a solid gun. It's got okay mobility, for all things considered. Um, it's not a bad tank at all. We're going to load an HE on this guy, and we were able to finish him off. I knew I was going to die from that ISU. I saw him behind me, but there was nothing I could really do about it. Ah, if this guy had just simply driven up with the team aggressive, it would have been a very easy win. Unfortunately... Teammates don't love to be teammates, as we know, so, uh, yeah, kind of fell apart. This Jag Panther is, uh, stock, so that, too, is a bit unfortunate. But, as I did say, the tank is pretty solid. I mean, the gun is good, 
And you can see that in this battle here. The gun was able to do its job. It was able to puncture our opponents very easily. The armor worked okay. That's kind of what I said. It's just an average, all-round good heavy when it comes to the armor, the mobility, the gun. The E75RT, the Keeler, is a bit different. Instead of having good all-round, it sacrifices some bad and some good. So as you can see, we did 3,039 damage. Even though it didn't look like I did that much, we did fine. I mean, we had three people on, four people on my team not do over 1,000 damage. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, it was just unfortunate to watch our team fall apart that quickly. But that's kind of how it is sometimes with the E75 TS. But as I said, the gun is nice. Everything's good. You've got a very fast rate of fire because you only have 310 damage per shot. So an 8.42 second reload. The Keeler is different. And I like the Keeler a lot more than the TS. Because first of all, it has more alpha. Instead of 310, it has 350. Which means now you have a much easier time of trading with your opponents. You don't need the poke as much. As a well, its gun has much more pen. 240 on the standard, two or 300 on the premium. I mean, that is a lot of pen. And as you can see, I'm running calibrated on both vehicles. So, it's not like one of them's just got rammer on it. No. This tank just has a better gun when it comes to pen. Dispersion-wise, both of these vehicles are the same at .317. However, I should point out that the aiming time is quite a bit worse on this vehicle at 4 seconds, and it's on-movement dispersion and DPM are also worse. So while you do gain that penetration and alpha, you do sacrifice in aiming time and DPM. Is it that much of a sacrifice? Honestly, no. I mean... It's just a better gun, really. It's just a better gun. Now, you do have two less degrees of gun depression, but because this is a rounded turret, I think it's better. Because now when you're hauled down, people actually have to aim for weak spots rather than loading premium and going straight through your turret. When it comes to mobility, the E75 RT is also much faster. It's got a power to weight of 13 instead of 10.8, and its traverse speed is better as well, which basically seals the deal for me. I think the Keeler is just a better tank than the E75 TS. Like, there are certain advantages the 75 TS has. DPM, it's got more of. When it comes to armor, it has more on the sides, and I would say overall the turret armor is better because it's flat, which means if you're dealing with more than one opponent, you don't need to angle it. It's already angled if they're somewhat like a 45 degree angle in front of you. Um, the aiming time is better on the E75 TS, and the fact that the tank has better side armor allows you to side scrape more. But... You have worse pen, you have worse turret armor frontally, especially when you're hauled down, you've worse mobility on both top speed and reverse, you've worse traverse speed, I mean, I personally, I just would rather have the, the pen and the alpha, um, and trade a little bit of armor. You know what, why is my light here? Like, really, really. You're gonna, my light is gonna throw this game because he's gonna drive here. Uh, well, all right. Well, let's see what we can do here in the uh, Keeler. There you go. Nice shot into the T-77. Now, side scraping wise, this is a pretty good vehicle because obviously it's got all that spaced armor on it. So should be fine on that aspect there. Let's go for another shell into the T-77. And apparently my entire team is here. I don't know what's going on. I, I seriously would like to tell you what is going on in this battle, but I am very confused. Uh, I thought that shell was going to reload faster than it did, but you know what? It's fine. For some reason, the Yag Panther fired an HE shell into my space. Yeah, I thought he penned me for a second, but uh, no, he didn't. He's just a doofus. All right, well, we lose a bit of health. Oh, we're losing a lot of health, actually. All right, well, let's get a tracking shell into the g -Sor. Get penned in the upper plate. And uh, let's see. There you go. Finally a bounce, man. <laughs> I took all that damage from my team to steal all of it. Oh, man. Well, I've managed to bleed a 1,300 health and deal, I'm pretty sure, zero damage in that amount of health I've bled. I was really hoping to get that g -Sor shot, um, and then I just didn't. Unfortunate. We have not bounced, like, any shells this game. You can see the problem with having... It's not even a rounded turret. It's just the fact that you're a big tank and everybody wants to shoot you. That's the only real problem. Everybody wants to shoot you. So, uh, I kind of became the punching bag for my team this battle. I mean, it's fine. I got plenty of health. And that's the nice thing about a vehicle like the 75 TS is that you got health. And you got armor. So... You should be using both of those in the battlefield, which is exactly what I've done here. But it is a bit unfortunate. Ah, okay, my reload was, again, slower than I thought. I don't know why, but this tank's reload is really catching me off guard. It's like one tick slower than I'm ex one tick slower than I'm expecting it to be. So 
I'm always trying to press the fire button like half a second or like 0.2 seconds before I get the shell. Either way, even with the stuff that happened this battle, we are uh, still doing fine. We get an easy shell to the Chiri, get a nice bounce from the Type 59. And with that, we did fine. I mean, we're up to 2300 damage already. This guy might kill me, uh, especially with my IS-5 not allowing me to turn there, unfortunately, but it doesn't matter. It was a pretty easy win overall, as we can see. Both tanks are pretty solid. This was not a bad battle at all, and even though I did bleed a lot of health, I don't really mind it too much when it allows my team to just push and win. I bled a lot of health there, we just went straight through, the g -Sor got killed instantly because of that, and we did fine. I mean, we still did 25-ish hundred damage, which is more than enough in tier 8, so I really can't complain all too much. It's a good vehicle. I wouldn't say it's anything insane. Neither of these vehicles are insane. They are both good tanks. Uh, but good in their own rights. As I said, I personally enjoy the Keeler more. I just think it's a better tank for my playstyle with the Alpha, but there are going to be people in the comments that say they like the E75TS better. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. But at the end of the day, it's just a video, and hopefully you enjoyed it. Make sure to click that subscribe button if you did. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.